I'm going to preview the one seed USC versus three seed UConn women's basketball game, which will be played tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And currently, UConn is favored by two and a half points. That's a little bit interesting to me, but I get, I get it because USC is not the strongest one seed in the world. I mean, in terms of the tournament this year. And I apologize in advance for looking down because I cannot memorize all this stuff here. And I'll go over keys for the game. But first of all, USC is 29-5 overall, 13-5 in the Pac-12. As we all know, they won the Pac-12 tournament over Stanford. And UConn is 32-5 and overall and 18-0. And UConn only has, I mean, 18-0 in the Big East. And UConn obviously won the conference tournament championship against Georgetown with the interim coach, which that coach is now a head coach. But that's besides the point here. And UConn only has eight available players for the rest of the year because of injuries. And that's unfortunate. And I'm going to go over players to keep it on for both teams. But first, I'm going to start with USC, and it has to start with Juju Watkins. And if you're UConn, you kind of have to make her ineffective, kind of like what Baylor did last game. And one thing they did and didn't do, though, is they fouled her too much, which, granted, a few of those were foul game, but you get the whole point. And she's the second leading scorer in the country. At 27 points per game, 7.2 rebounds per game, 3.3 assists per game. Her kryptonite is turnovers, 4.1 turns per game, 2.3 skills per game, 1.6 blocks per game, 2.6 fouls per game, 84.7% on free throws on 274 attempts, 31.9% on threes on 204 attempts. And she's only a freshman, y'all. She's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with until she's 21 years old because that's when you could declare for the WNBA draft. Or until you've seen the year. So I'm just going to mention that up front. And it's no particular order on this. Because they don't have the stat, stats thing anymore for particular teams. So I apologize if it's a little off. But you, but you get the point. I mean, then there's McKenzie Fords. 14 points per game. 3.1 rebounds per game. 3.3 assists per game. 0.9 steals per game. 2.2 turns per game, 2.1 fouls per game, 77.4% on threes, I mean, on free throws on 93 attempts, 37.7% on threes, though, on 199 attempts. Okay, that's... Then there's Kayla Padilla. 8 points per game, so close to 2 rebounds per game, I'm going to just go ahead and mention it. 1.9 rebounds per game, 2.6, 2.6 assists per game. 0.8 turns per game, 0.8 steals per game, 1.6 fouls per game, 77.1% on free throws, on 35 attempts, 44.1% on, on threes on 145 attempts. So she definitely could shoot the ball from from three. Okay, they're big in Rhea Marshall is a force to be reckoned with. She averages a double-double. 10.2 points per game, 2.5 rebounds per game, 1.2 steals per game, 2.1 blocks per game, 1.3 turns per game, 2.2 fouls per game, 67.5% on three. I mean on free throws on 83 attempts, 0 for 1 on threes. So she's not a three-point shooter. And the last starter I'm going to mention for USC is Kaylin Davis. 6.1 points per game, 5.7 fouls. I mean rebounds per game. Yeah, rebounds per game. It's close to two assists per game. I'm going to mention it. 1.8. Assists per game, 0.8 steals per game, 0.7 blocks per game, 2.7 fouls per game, 58.5% 58, 58.5% on on free throws on 53 attempts, 0 for 3 on threes. And as if you go look it up, USC's has literally four players above six feet tall in their starting lineup. The only exception is Kayla Padilla. So that's really could be an issue for UConn, potentially, but we have to wait and see. And some bench players are like that played last game. It's Clarice, UConn Wafo, U, I mean A K U N W A 
FO, I apologize. 2.2 points per game. I know it's not that much. Three three points per game, but it's still notable. 0.9 blocks per game, 0.8 turnovers per game, 1.9 fouls per game, 28.6% on free throws on 21 attempts. So that's I definitely a hack a shack player. Right there. Okay, the next player I'm gonna mention is Kayla Williams. 2.7 points per game, 0.8 fouls per game, 60% on free throws on 20 attempts to 27.6% on on threes on 29 attempts. Okay, there's Taylor Big B that I'm going to have to mention. 4.8 points per game, 0.7 steals per game, 1.2 fouls per game, 71.4% on free throws on 28 attempts. 36.4% from three on 99 attempts. So, okay, I don't know why the angle did that right there. And I apologize for that. It usually stays still. I'm trying to readjust it. That way it doesn't do that again. So, yeah. I think that's pretty much all the players you need to know. I, because Dominic Darius didn't play last game. But I'm just going to go ahead and mention that player just in case. Two point five points per game. Point six turns per game, point six fouls per game, seventy seventy three point three percent on three I mean free throws on fifty attempts, fifteen attempts, twenty two point seven percent on threes on twenty two attempts. Yeah, she didn't hasn't played since the first round, but I just want to cover my basis on that. But that's definitely some players, and I know they got Malia Samuels that could potentially play, but she hasn't played in in a in a little bit. But I'm just gonna go right ahead. And mention her even though she might not play the you it's like kind of usually like it's like 1.5 points per game two for four on free throws six for 18 on threes 0.8 fouls per game that's pretty much it now I'm gonna go over the UConn side of things and like I said UConn is not that deep to begin with only eight available players and I'm gonna just go ahead and mention all eight because what if they get in foul trouble and they foul out and they're down to five players available. I mean, that's the thing. That's why I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Even though they may not play a ton of players off the bench because obviously, you know, their, their main scoring comes from the starters. And the first player to mention right off the top is Paige Beckers. So that's going to be an intriguing battle. Paige Beckers versus Juju Watkins. Yeah, literally UConn last game played only six players, but I'm just going to go ahead and mention the other two. So 21.9 points per game, 5.1 rebounds per game, 3.8 assists per game, 2.2 steals per game, 1.4 fouls, I mean blocks per game, 1.5 turns per game, 1.6 fouls per game. It's 83.1% on... on I mean, on free throws on 160 attempts, 41.5% on free, I mean, on threes on 188 attempts. And there's obviously Aaliyah Edwards that I need to mention right off the jump, too. I mean, 17.5 points per game, 9.3 rebounds per game, 2.1 assists per game, 1.6 steals per game, 2.5 turnovers per game, 1 block per game, 2.5 fouls per game. 75.3% on free throws on 158 attempts, 0 for 3 on threes. So not really a three-point shooter. 
and it's no particular order on that. I just want to go definitely go over those first two. And obviously, this Ashland Shade, 11.4 points per game, 3.3 rebounds per game, 1 steal per game, 1.1 turns per game, 1.3 fouls per game, 91.3% on free throws on 23 attempts, 35.8% on threes on 173 attempts. Then there's K.K. Arnold that I definitely need to mention too. 8.9 points per game, 3.1 rebounds per game, 3.2 assists per game, 1.9 turns per game, 2.3 steals per game, 2.4 fouls per game, 68.2% on, on free throws on, 100, I mean on 88 attempts, just 88. 33.7% on threes on 86 attempts. And there's Nick Mule. Too, I need to mention it, and that will consist of the starters. 6.8 points per game, 3.9 rebounds per game, 6.4 assists per game, 1.2 steals per game, 2.6 turnovers per game, 2.2 fouls per game, 60% on free throws on 15 attempts, so not a lot of attempts on free throws this year, but 39.5% on threes on 119 attempts. And the lone player that played off the bench last game was Ice Brady. Four point three points per game, three point four rebounds per game, one point two turnovers per game, one point nine fouls per game, fifty nine point five percent on free throws on forty two attempts, twenty two point seven percent on threes on twenty two attempts. So that's the only player that played last game off the bench. But I'm still gonna go ahead and mention the other two since I'm so close. I know Inez Benning, Benning, Benton Court doesn't play that much, but still, I'm going to go ahead and mention 0. 0.6 points per game. Two for four on, on free throws, 0 for seven on threes. That's all, that's all on that particular player. I'm just trying to think. Anyone else? Because I know Caroline Dutrar. Charmy, she's done. Okay. I definitely know Azzy Fudd is not playing. She's out for the year. I know she is. And she has been for a while. While I'm thinking about who is that last player, obviously you want to limit your foul trouble while getting them in foul trouble. Especially, it's a critical thing for UConn in general because the number of players healthy is not that much. I mean, not much depth, I mean, in general. So that's definitely a concern. Of course, you want to contain the shooters, contain the slashers. I mean, make those three-point shooters take long twos instead. Try to make those volume scores be ineffective. Kind of like UConn needs to do that. Juju Watkins. That's what Baylor did exactly last game in terms of uh, from the field. They made her uncomfortable. And you got to make the other team uncomfortable both offensively and defensively. You got to make adjustments on the fly. I mean, not just from first quarter, second quarter, first half, the second half, third quarter, the fourth quarter, but possession by possession, timeout to timeout. I'm just telling the truth and about this. You got to out-rebound the other team. That's important, especially getting those offensive rebounds is critical because of second chance points. What you want to limit those on defense, and you got to get some points in the paint. Transition points as well, and points on turners, of course, you want to limit that on defense. And you got you got to out-hustle the other team too. I'm, I'm just telling the truth. Okay, the last player I need to mention is Cadence Samuels for UConn. So I apologize for the like interrupting the keys to the game, but you gotta have good shot selection too on offense and make it hard on for them on defense. You got get some steals and get some blocks would be critical. And you don't know about the officiating in this game. You gotta just play through it. And find ways to win the game. I'm just. And when you get to the free throw line. 
you got to make them count. That's kind of why USC won against Baylor last game. Kind of the reason, besides Baylor not making shots. I'm just telling the truth. And they play good team defense. It's just... But, of course, you don't want to have, like, those long, cold stretches in a game. I mean, because if you do and the other team score, scores on you, it might be too much to overcome. It might be, but, of course, you got to withstand the runs from the other team and all this. Okay. And, by the way, Caden Samuels has not played since the first game in the NCAA tournament. I'm just going to... Say that up front because that's what the game log says. I mean, in all this, 5.1 points per game, 2.6 rebounds per game, 0.7 turns per game, 1.2 fouls per game, 52.9% on, on free throws on 17 attempts, 35.4% on threes on 96 attempts. Obviously, you want to take away the best three point, take out those role players, and if you could just shut down, like slow down the best players. In this game and take away the role players, it'll be very difficult. It could be hard. I mean, I'm just telling the truth about it is. And if you give a team below 40% shooting from the field, you have a good chance of winning. Usually. Unless you shoot worse than the other team. But that's besides the point here. And make them below 35, like 33% or, or less on from threes. And like I said, you got to make your free throws count. Because if you don't, that could really hurt you in the long run. Here, and you got to be smart with the fouling. And of course, you don't want like the technical fouls or flagrant fouls, too. I mean, I'm just being obvious on that. You got to keep your composure. You got to play your game. And you got to be, you got to be ball tough. Because what if the opponent wants to try to steal the ball from you after a rebound or any type of situation. So, yeah, I got to get some second chance points. Of course, so you want to limit that on defense, like I said. And sometimes points in transition can make a difference in this game. And I would honestly say try to take away those role players, like I said, for the O team. And try to get those best players ineffective. Because I know Juju Watkins is a volume shooter. That's a definite. And I know... Paige Beckers can be that, and Aaliyah Edwards can be that, potentially, but I'm just saying. And this is more intriguing to me than game, to me, than the LSU versus Iowa game. I mean, Iowa game, and, and I was the one seed, as we all know, and you know, LSU's the three. It's because of the matchup between Juju Watkins and Paige Beckers, first of all. That is an intriguing matchup. Because I do think Juju Watkins... Is going to be the face of college women's basketball once Paige Beckers goes to the WNBA, which will not be this year. It'll be pro it, she'll be back next year, but that's the that's besides the point here, or even a year after, because you know the COVID year still exists. I'm just telling the truth, and even right now, Juju Watkins could be the face if you want to say the case that. Her and Paige Beckers definitely are there. And Kaylin Clark is up there and Angel Reese. But you get the whole point in terms of the those four guards. <laughs> I mean, those four. Actually, three guards and that one four from LSU. But you get the whole point. And like I said, this game will be on, on, on 8 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. The game will be played in Portland. And I expect this game to be tight. All the way. And you got to adjust to the officiating. And the game will be played in the Moto Center. And and the truth of the matter is. I want the officiating to be even. Of course we all do. Because look. Bad officiating hurts the game. It does. But. If there's anything out there. Like you got to. Make. Find. Make plays to win. Regardless of the officiating in general, whether it's they're too physical or they're fouling and not, they're not calling it, you just got to push through it. I mean, and I, like I said, I expect this to be a really good game. And this could have be an upset potential here. I could definitely see it because USC is not like the best one seed 
in the world, but I know at the same time, UConn is not the same UConn as compared to the past. And they don't have a lot of depth. And USC barely beat Baylor, a 5 seed. 74 70, last game. And we all know that UConn was actually up double digits against Duke, but they still won the game. But it's not, it was not by double digits, though. It was like 53 45. So both these teams need to step up defensively. Of course, you got to find a way to make some shots. And you got to take some charges would be good or and all that. This and getting some steals and getting some blocks. But you got to be smart with the fouling. Because in this situation, you don't want to be like one of those players. You already declared to the WNBA draft. and Or it's your last game, potentially, and have regret of fouling out. You just don't want to do that, and you got to give out your all in this game for both of these teams. So, anyways, if you like this content, hit the like and subscribe button. See you guys later on the road of 600 scars. Close ultimate goal. It's a thousand more. So, many money out this course. Like the video, comment the video. Really got to see YouTube background so more people can see it. Share the video does help as well so more people can watch. And if you're watching and that subscribe, hit subscribe button. It's free the notification bell as well. And I don't want to do that other game too because that's just a repeat matchup from last year's national championship. And everybody's going to even cover that game. Probably everybody and their mother. This game might not be covered as much. And that's why I'm doing it. 